Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on non-random sampling. Now remember, random sampling is where every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. And there were three types of random sampling we looked at in the previous tutorial. Simple random sampling, systematic sampling and stratified sampling. And in all cases we needed a sampling frame made up of sampling units. So let's recap on what random sampling is with this example. Well, here the question states that the owner of a very large youth club has designed a new method for allocating people into teams. Now, before introducing the method, he decided to take a sample of the members to find out how the members of the youth club might react. The questions state that we need to suggest a suitable sampling frame and were asked to identify the sampling units. Now, remember, the sampling frame is made up of a list of ordered or named sampling units. So, to answer the question, a database of all the members would be our sampling frame, whereby each sampling unit would be each member in our youth club. So this was a quick recap on random sampling. Now let's have a look at non-random sampling. Well, non-random sampling is where we do not take into account the chances of a member being selected and we cannot have a sampling frame. These are called non-probability sampling methods. And the first non-random sampling method we're going to look at is quota sampling. Now, quota sampling is commonly used in market research, and it focuses on dividing the population into strata groups by the interviewer or researcher, and each group or strata is representative of the population. Now, once a quota has been filled, no more people in that group are interviewed. So let's look at an example. Here, the owner of the same youth club wants to attract more members. He knows there's approximately 1,000 youths in the local community, and there are approximately 600 youths aged between 13 to 14 years old, 200 aged between 15 and 16 years old, and 200 aged between 17 and 18 years old. Now, the question asks, how could a quota sampling method of size 50 be taken to ensure that he asks the opinion of each type of youth and it's fairly representative of the local community? So in this question, you can see we have our researcher and the researcher has divided the population into groups. In this case, it's the ages and he needs to take a representative sample of the population. Now, we use the same formula as we did for stratified sampling. So working out each group, we have to do 600 divided by 1,000 times 50 means we're going to sample 30 youths between the age of 13 to 14 years of age. Next, we do 200 divided by 1,000 times 50 means we're going to sample 10 youths aged between 15 and 16 years of age. And finally, we do 200 divided by 1,000 times 50 means we're going to sample 10 youths between the age of 17 to 18 years of age. So now we know how many of each strata we need, which is representative of the population. Our researcher will go round the houses and ask the opinion of the youths in the local community, asking their age and opinion, ensuring to keep to the designated sample number of each quota. Now in this example, we have now reached the quota of 17 to 18 years old. So we now ignore the responses of people aged 17 to 18 as the quota is now full. So when looking at quota sampling, remember it's used commonly in market research. We divide the population into strata, which is representative of the population. And once a quota has been filled, no more people in that group are interviewed. So to answer the question, the owner will need to speak to 30 youths aged between 13 to 14 years of age, 10 youths aged between 15 to 16 years of age, and 10 youths between the age of 17 to 18 years of age. And it's important to state that any youth spoken to where the quota is full will be ignored. Now let's have a look at our next non-random sampling method. Here we're looking at opportunity sampling. Now opportunity sampling is where a sample is taken from people who are available at the time the study is carried out and who fits the desired criteria. So let's have a look at an example. Here we have the same owner of the youth club and he still wants to attract more members and still wants a sample of 50, but he wants to use an opportunity sampling method and we're asked to describe an approach he could use. So we have our researcher and we have all the people around our youth club. And remember, 
Opportunity sampling samples who are available at the time the study is carried out. So imagine there are lots of people available when he wants to conduct his research. So the answer would be the owner asked the first 50 people between the ages of 13 to 18 years of age that pass his youth club that afternoon. So now we've gone through two methods of non-random sampling, quota sampling and opportunity sampling. Let's go through the advantages and disadvantages of each. Let's start with quota sampling. Well, the advantages are we don't need a sampling frame and it's cheap and easy for small samples and still representative of the population. Remember how we calculate each strata. It also allows easy comparison between different groups in the population. Some disadvantages, well, it can introduce bias from our researcher and the population does need to be divided into groups which can be inaccurate or costly. And increasing the scope of study also increases the number of groups, which is timely and costly. Also, non-responses are not recorded as such. Looking at the advantages of opportunity sampling, well, it's easy to carry out and inexpensive. And the disadvantages, well, it's unlikely to provide a representative sample and it is highly dependent upon the individual researcher. So now we've gone through the different types of sampling and the advantages and disadvantages. Let's have a look at some more past exam questions. Here the question states, a lake contains three different types of carp. There are estimated 450 mirror carp, 300 leather carp and 850 common carp. Tim wishes to investigate the health of the fish in the lake and he decides to take a sample of 160 fish. We're asked to give a reason why stratified random sampling cannot be used. We're asked to explain how a sample size of 160 could be taken to ensure that the estimated populations of each type of carp are fairly represented and we're also asked to state the name of the sampling method used. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. To answer part A, the reason why is because a stratified random sample needs a sampling frame and it's not possible to have a sampling frame here. We can calculate how many of each type of fish should be sampled, but we cannot have a sampling frame because we can't name or number each fish and then randomly select them using a spinner or a hat or a calculator. So it's not possible to have our sampling frame. So therefore, a stratified random sampling method cannot be used. So the best method is a quota sampling method as it will allow us a sample of 160 fish and it will be reflective of the population structure. So let's have a look at mirror carp first. We know approximately there's 450 mirror carp out of 1600 multiplied by our sample size states that we need to have a sample of 45 mirror carp. Next, let's have a look at leather carp. Well, we know there's about 300 leather carp out of 1600 multiplied by our sample size states that we need to sample 30 leather carp. And finally, common carp. There's 850 out of the 1600 multiplied by our sample size means that we're going to sample 85 common carp. So Tim will need to catch 45 mirror carp, 30 leather carp and 85 common carp and ignore any fish caught where the quota is full. When referring to quota sampling in the exam, ensure you include the relevant numbers and don't forget to state a comment such as ignoring any fish or items caught where the quota is full. So in summary, we've gone through two types of non-sampling methods, non-random sampling and opportunity sampling. And it's important that you remember the keywords associated with sampling and incorporate those keywords into your explanations. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next video.